Science funding is broken and it is getting worse over time. While major prestigious universities appear to be insulated from some of these issues due to their enormous wealth, many universities around the globe are plagued with funding issues and science is suffering everywhere. We have systematically neglected governmental funding of science, allowing for an increase in vested interests and corruption within science itself. The system is so rotten that it has fundamentally changed the way scientists work, taking them away from doing science and instead burdening them with bureaucracy. We can't afford to maintain this position because science is so fundamentally important to how we live today. Science has given us phones, computers, advanced medical equipment, and many more things that we can't live without, as well as more than a few amazing scientific accomplishments. Science is also discovering and inventing new things all of the time, some of which may completely change our lives. But the way we fund science is one, wasting money, two, wasting the time of scientists, three, is not a fair method of assessment and it does not reflect scientific outcomes. And four, it can end the career of great scientists, sending them towards more palatable careers. So how bad is the funding process? How have we gotten to this position? And is there a better way? Let's discuss it. Now I'm guessing many of you haven't written a grant. That's okay. You aren't missing out on anything fun. Every grant process is different, but they basically all involve writing an application that is most likely exceedingly long. Then waiting for months for it to be reviewed, most likely by someone that is overworked and underappreciated. And then after waiting all of this time and putting in all of this effort, you have a relatively small chance of success. Put on top of this, if you are unsuccessful, it might mean the end of your career. So other than the sadness and the hyper-competitive nature of this process, what are some of the issues? Well, for starters, it wastes a lot of money. One study estimated that 38 days of work were spent on every application, which for the grant application added up to roughly 550 years which is an insane amount of time for these scientists to spend not doing research, but writing grants. Also, in the case of the grants in this study, 80% of the applicants were unsuccessful, so 440 years of completely wasted research time. But it doesn't end there. For the lucky successful applicants, they need to strap themselves in for an additional administrative work that can come with having a grant. This can include things like timesheets for the entire project on how you exactly spend your time and how this fulfills the original grant proposal. This can actually lead to scientists not being able to allocate their time to projects that they might have more fruitful outcomes, all because of a grant proposal that they wrote five years ago doesn't allow for it. A 2018 faculty work survey in the US found that researchers spend on average 44% of their time not working on research. And as a lot of scientists are paid through grants, all of this time spent performing administrative tasks and applying for more grants wastes the grant money itself. In one study in Canada, they found that the peer review and approval process was more expensive than just giving the average grant money to all of the applicants. In this case, the review process was truly a mind-boggling waste of money. But maybe all of this is worth it. Maybe the competition is leading to better scientists. And maybe the lengthy grant process makes sure that only the best research is funded. Well, unfortunately not. One study found that whether or not a grant was accepted was more related to who reviewed the grant rather than the grant itself. Other studies found little correlation between 
grant review assessment scores, and the citation of the research publications, meaning that the review process was not good at estimating the impact of research. Another study found that when including for random variations in the grant process itself, 59% of the 620 accepted grants in their study were sometimes not funded, indicating the significant element of chance in getting a grant application accepted. All of this combined doesn't bode well for the grant system. Grants waste a lot of money by being overly complicated and they are also poor indicators of outcomes. Another issue is that in some countries, science funding is decreasing over time. This clearly depends on what country you're in. Some countries are increasing their funding, but many are not. In the US, science funding steadily decreased as a function of GDP since the 1960s, going from a high of around 2.1% of GDP down to a low of around 0.7%. At the same time, funding for overall research and development is increasing, meaning businesses are more than making up for the lack of federal funding. But is this something that we want? Do we want our scientists to be beholden to companies to perform vital research? I would hope not. Even in the case where funding isn't decreasing, the rate of successful applicants is, meaning that we are overtraining for the number of jobs or we are potentially taking advantage of low cost students to keep science thriving. All of these effects add up to a growing dissatisfaction within science and a significant burnout. A 2021 survey by Nature, which is conducted every year, found that less than 60% of respondents reported being satisfied with their position. Now, some of this is because of the pandemic, which everyone found difficult. But it seems that science was hit harder than industry. The survey found that 58% of academics' level of satisfaction with their work had decreased from the year prior which compares to only 44% in industry. One academic noted, as a profession, we have gotten into the position where we work every night. We read theses, we review journals, we sit on grant review panels, all for free. Basically, we have two full-time jobs. The survey reflects this position, with nearly one-third of respondents reported working more than 50 hours per week. The report goes on to say that working weeks of more than 50 hours were twice as common in academia when compared to industry. So, is there a better method? Well, one idea would be to have a lottery system. Basically, grant reviews are good at ruling out bad research. They are just not good at separating the good from the great. So in this proposal, rather than trying to find the best research, they would try to remove bad research from the pool and then let the lottery system decide who gets the grants. This could have multiple advantages, particularly if it reduced the time required to write the grants in the first place. But this is a hard sell. When people get grants, they are likely to assume it is because they deserved it, not because of some luck, even if on average, it is likely that luck played a role. So unfortunately, we probably won't see a large overhaul of the grant process anytime soon. In the end, we waste significant money and time on writing grants. If successful, we waste more time with pointless administration. The grant process itself isn't fair and it doesn't reflect the quality of the research and it doesn't reflect the outcomes. So, not great overall. If you like this video, you might also like this video where I discuss whether or not you can trust science YouTubers. 
Thanks for watching. Have fun and see you next time.